first of all, uh, my name is Hannah, um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm Lone. <laughs> yeah, and we're from uh, DGI, which is uh, yeah, it's the Danish uh, sports organization, and we're working with Sport for All. Um, and today we're going to talk about this uh, concept called ABC of uh, mental health. And actually, it was the perfect intro and part of departure, uh, this uh, intro from uh, Neon, um, because uh, this is a practical uh, yeah, mental health promotion campaign uh, we're working with in Denmark, but it's also like a, a global uh, mental health campaign. But a, a little bit about the context, because in the last 10 years, there's been a significant decrease in mental health and well-being amongst people in the Western countries and especially also in, uh, in Denmark concerning stress, anxiety, depression, and the feeling of loneliness. And when we are looking at the data, the latest uh, study from Denmark, uh, it shows that 33% of all girls and women between 16 and 24 years old have a very low score on the mental well-being scale, as you see here. So especially the last 10 years, there has been a, a really concerning um, yeah, decrease, decrease in the mental well-being amongst uh, this group. Uh, when we look into uh, the, the girls between 16 and 24, we also see uh, that 52% of all girls and women between 16 and 24 years old experience daily stress symptoms. Um, and furthermore, we also see a decrease in this experience life satisfactions amongst youth around 11 to 15 years old. So all around there is uh, quite uh, um, yeah, some statistics are showing that this is going in the wrong direction. And uh, of course, there are a lot of consequences of poor mental health. First of all, in our, um, our case, a, a lot of people are dropping out or a risk of dropping out of social communities and leisure activities. And um, also, there is a higher risk of leaving school, etc. So, first of all, there is also a strong evidence that that this impact mental health has on society and its effect on both everyone directly and indirectly, including its connection to physical health and its influence on academic achievement and employment is is really huge. And um, mental health is not something that you're born with or can achieve throughout a, a course in life or so. Mental health is like a continuous process, process throughout the life course. So imagine that this river is the, the river of life. Sometimes you feel it's easy to swim. It's easy to wake up in the morning, get out of the door and connect with people around you. Maybe you feel the right end of this river like thriving mental health. Other days, it's more moderate. It can be hard to get up in the morning. Maybe you feel that the life is really tough to swim in and there's a lot of resistance. Maybe you drive over to the, the left side of this river and, and experience maybe symptoms of stress, anxiety, and depression. And um, in many years, there's been a focus and priority on treatment and prevention. That is the left part of this river. But if we really want to break this curve of increasing bad mental health, we have to focus even more on how to enhance individuals and persons' resources to be better at swimming in this river of life, even though it's a bad day and even though it's a bad period of our life. So that's a shift in perspective going from what makes people sick and what can we do to prevent it to another perspective where we look on what makes people happy and what can we do more about that. And that is the way we work with Act Belong Commit in DGI. We work with this mental health promotion where we look on what is uh, working really good and what can we do more about that. So basically it's about moving this curve where we have like the most people of the Danish population, which actually has a moderate mental health, but statistically are moving to the left going, increasing uh, more people are having, yeah, feeling bad mental health. So we really want to change this curve and push it in the right direction. So more people are thriving mental health, but we're working with like the the population with the moderate mental health. Yes, as Niam also said in the beginning, 
And also uh, the director general from WHO said that we need to transform our attitudes, actions and approaches to promote and protect our mental health. We can and should do this by transforming the environments that influence our mental health. And that is exactly what we're doing in the DGI because mental health, when we talk about it, is the experience of joy in the daily life. It's the small, simple things that make a huge difference in our daily life, but also in our, our leisure time activities. So we would like to invite you to reflect when was the last time that you experienced a situation where a negative mood rubbed off on others or opposite when did you have an experience where a positive behavior behavior was contagious to your surroundings? Maybe you felt it on your own, or maybe you felt that you can, yeah, your actions was contagious to others. Try to think about that, that right now. So the point of this talk is that uh, if we intensify our focus on these small micro actions in our environments, and behaviors that create this positive atmosphere, it will contagious. It it is contagious, and that is uh, that has a uh, automatically will motivate more people to stay in our environments if it's nice to stay. Basically, another really important thing when we are working with our sport communities is that mental health is not only the individual uh, responsibility; it's it's a shared responsibility, and. We as an NGO and sport organization, we have 1.6 million uh, children and adolescents and adults every week. So that's a lot of people uh, going active in our sport communities. Um, and a really important point is that not only because we are an NGO, but our members will represent those statistics we talked about before. So that is why we have an obligation to care. Yes. And just a second. We have a house key situation. <laughs> so sorry. All right. <laughs> so um, yes. So that's the point that having good mental health means that we are better able to connect, function, cope, and thrive in our everyday life. And sports and PR are evidently linked to good mental health for the physiological benefits, social aspects. But it, most of all, it's also like this offline break that it provides. Yes, so we talk a lot about micro actions and how we can enhance these micro actions, actually positive micro actions in our sport communities. So we only not only focus on the activity, but more about the environment that makes it really nice to stay. Yes, so there was a little bit about this uh, context uh, concerning why do we work with mental health and DGI? I, I get the honor of talking about what we can do where uh, Hannah had the, the the honor of telling about all the negative trends that we're seeing right now in society. Um, it's always a pleasure to get to present that there is, well, we can call it a solution, but there is a way to come around um, doing mental health promotion in a way that's evidence-based and that we have seen massive improvements in our sports communities by using this method. So, but before I get into the Act Belong Commit, uh, what we call ABC of Mental Health, I think it's really important to also um, quickly tell about the partnership. So we in DGI, we're not doing this by ourselves. As Hannah was saying, uh, mental health promotion, the moment we do a shift from the focus of treatment to mental health promotion, we're in the boat together. It's not about you or me anymore. It's a shared responsibility for improving mental health, both our own mental health, but also each other's mental health. Um, and that recognition also shows in the way that we have approached working with Act Belong Commit in Denmark. Uh, we've created a partnership with more than 60 different partners. These are just some of them. Um, they range from public institutions, uh, municipalities, regions, um, to NGOs, different kind of stakeholders and interest groups that in of cultural, social, um, uh, aspects or like um, patient groups 
every single organization that could actually see a benefit of using their community to lift the mental health agenda. We work as social fran uh, franchises in the way that we promote the mental health, not, as I said, not only within our own organizations, but we also buy in on the idea that we, with our abilities and knowledges uh, individually in the organization can help lift each other. Um, that also means that if you look at the partnership, you would also see that there are very few actual health providers or healthcare providers uh, amongst our, our, our partnership. The people we have in here are people that are working with the social determinants of mental health. Um, and again, we use this shared language called act, belong, commit to actually gather professions across geography, across sectors. And it helps us justify having one united path working towards improving mental health in Denmark. So what is this wonder kit that we're talking about? Um, so before it's, we tend to like, jump between calling it at belong to commit that is the english version of it in denmark we've translated it into abc of mental health only because at belong commit doesn't translate easily into a danish context so in order to keep the abc we are calling it abc of mental health nonetheless it is the same thing regardless um it's an evidence-based mental health promotion campaign it originated in Australia and we have stolen it, adopted it, and it is working wonders. Um, what it focuses on is basically to encourage people, individuals and communities to actually take responsibility and improve their mental health. Um, yes, sorry, I just need to look at my notes. Um, and it can be used by everyone, which is actually the perfect thing. It's simple. People can relate to these three points I'll go more into depth with. But this means that because it's applicable, regardless of where you are, which context or who you are, it also means that regardless of whether or not you're feeling you're, you're struggling with mental illnesses or anything, you can, we can still focus on making the best possible mental health state for you in that specific situation. And that is also why a lot of our um, partners and collaborating institutions buy in on this idea because it's empowering wherever you are and what situation you're in. It's, it's concept, context adaptable. So A is for act. With that, we mean we need to do something. It's it's very, you have to think of it as a very low key um, method, but it's about encouraging people to do something, either mentally, socially, spiritually, or physically. It doesn't have to be running a marathon. It can be going for a walk if that is where your level is, but it's about encouraging people to actually have an active lifestyle where you make the choice to do something. The moment we know that you do that, we also know that it'll be contagious to your mental health in terms of equipping you to feel like you can handle the daily challenges. Belonging, I love that this was part of the presentation because this is also definitely one of our favorite ones. It's that you have to do something together with other people. It's about encouraging you to nurture family relations or friendships, um, or even if, if that is not your priority, still the, the joy of joining groups or participating in community activities and all means invite other people to join along. It's about the social networks that is so essential for the way we're thriving in an everyday life. They're the healthy distractions from the daily stresses that we have, and they also act as our support group the moment we feel struggles in life. Studies actually show that like it's better for you to get a hug from someone you don't like than not getting a hug at all, and that says a lot about how important belonging is in terms of mental health. The last one is committing, and that is to do something meaningful, which meaningful could be like a very heavy word to go into because we can sit and we can, you know, um, reflect on this for, for ages. But what the essence of it is, is do something that creates value to you, whether it's learning something new, supporting some courses, being volunteer for something. It, it's just engaging in something that you find a value to that actually gives you an increased sense of self-worth and joy. 
Um, so this whole feeling active, social, connected and engaged in meaningful activities, it's overall, it's an easy sentence for a good mental health. And this is proven to improve your mental health. So we just need to think about or stop for a while and think about how can we do more of these things in our everyday life. The beauty of it is it's action oriented and it focuses on the positive things. So rather than dodging the bullet of uh, getting stressed or uh, risking depression, we actually encourage people to do some of the things they already have a good habit of doing, but we want them to do even more. What we are challenging in DGI is to sometimes go in and say, well, are we as good at doing these things as we say that we do? Are we, well, in, in sports, it's given that we're being active, like we're meeting around an activity, but how good are we actually at making sure all our participants feel that they're part of our community? You can easily be physically part of a community without feeling part of a community. And there's a huge difference in that when we talk about mental health. Um, do our participants feel that they're able to give to the community? Do they feel that they have that value? So to dive into it in terms of DGI and how we work with it, we actually isolate the belonging and the commitment and we challenge our sports communities to look into how are we doing on these two parameters in terms of our events in our workouts? doing our with all our volunteers and in the physical room, but especially also when it comes to welcoming new people. Like the welcome is an essential part of making sure that that our participants experience joy and are happy and want to come back even more. Like because again, as we talk about physical activity and the sport communities around it are essential for mental health. So we need to make sure more people come and join us. So it's easier said than done, though, especially when we work in the Danish context, um, because as you guys can see, expat insights, they actually rank Denmark as one of the worst countries um, to welcome. This is a study of foreigners, but in general to welcome people. Um, and this is measured in terms of feeling welcome, friendliness and finding friends. There is also an explanation to this, but it's a very important um, a point to highlight when we talk about the welcome and it is that in Denmark we have a negative politeness culture which influences our welcome approach. Uh, with that said it's not that we're impolite however our interpretation and our culture around greeting people will be to give them space in order to find their own spot in the in the group and we wait for them to take or to come and ask questions. And that is our way of showing respect and politeness to new people. So you guys can imagine that the moment people walk in and they're already in and a little bit out of their comfort zone, being the new one, not knowing any of the habits or the way the practice goes, uh, it's a lot of extra pressure to put on them to actually approach you as well. So we are very much aware in DJI that we have to actually get most of our sports communities to get a little bit out of their comfort zone and start reapproaching the host role in a more positive way. That means being more proactive, meeting the people in the beginning um, and being the one asking, do you need help rather than awaiting people to come and ask for the help? So this is also something we then bring into the, the welcoming process when we walk, work with our um, sports communities. And in DJI, we approach a welcoming of, an, of a new person or any person in three uh, three steps. It's there is a before and during and an after. And just to give some examples of what this can look like in a very like low key way, it would be that we actually challenge our sports communities to look at their social media platforms. Do we make sure to give new people all the information they need before they even enter the sports club, because that is where the initial meeting is. That's where they can see whether or not there are certain standards they need to meet or whether like get a feel of whether or not this club will be a right match for them. Also, we encourage people to have a host that takes care of them from the beginning to meet them in the entry uh, entrance and helps with the onboarding. Doing a practice, we're focusing on names. It seems very like it seems very natural, but a lot of people actually forget about this, that, that knowing each other's names is a way of creating some kind of belonging. 
we encourage people to delegate a workout body so you're not alone on your first couple of, of practices and also a very important one is to be aware or become aware of all the unwritten rules and stating them to the new people because there's nothing worse than actually ste stepping outside of the box within the first couple of times you're out of practice. We can all relate to that, that, you know, there might be certain people using certain spots in the locker room or whatever. Um, and it's just better to get it out there in the open to make people feel like they know how to fit in. Um, after an end practice as well, you know, we want to make sure that that people end, end the practice as a group, that people just don't disappear. And again, making sure that they get feedback from the new participants, because it's also important to learn from new participants, whether it's an overwhelming feeling, getting a feel of them. Again, a reference back to the introduction, knowing and a little bit more. Did she feel comfortable in that new practice? Is there worries? Is there some wonders that she needs that we could easily meet her questions? Uh, or give her answers to her questions. Yeah. So that is just, again, focus on the low, you know, the, the micro actions that are so easy to do. We're not talking about big financial changes in a sports club in order to actually improve the welcoming of people. We're talking about behavioral changes. Um, and these are tiny, tiny adjustments that you can do that can make a massive difference for, for a, a participant. Um, also, one thing is to welcome people, but we also need to have a focus on the community culture that's around, because in the end, we know that people, they may actually show up the first time because of an activity, that that is what attracts them, but what makes them stay in a sports community is often the community itself and the social aspect of the community. So it would be ignorant of us to actually know that. Again, this is focused on the belonging especially. So what we do with our sports communities is we actually go about and challenge their culture, um, challenge their um, self-image or self-narrative, so to say. Um, we ask them, who are you guys and, and where do you guys want to be? Oftentimes we see that people tend to think they are more than they actually are. So this is a good reality check for them. Also in terms of like making a reflection, are we an open or closed community? Because if we're a closed community, there's no reason to, to keep promoting that people can just come and join if they're going to, to be met by a closed door. Um, in terms of the welcoming behavior, is it only one or two of the parents that actually have that positive vibe? Or is it something we're good at spreading out to all the parents that they sit and they greet the other children and parents when they come in the door? Or is it the coach that that, that quality belongs to? Um, are we good at also taking a, a common or like mutual responsibility for creating a good environment with the culture? Or again, does that rely on that one specific coach that just encompass a lot of social abilities? These are some of the things that can give us a um, baseline for how our, how our community is doing and what we need to focus on in terms of improving it. So again, when it comes to the community culture, we often tend to zoom in on the practice because that is where we can do a lot to help participant, participants um, come back. And it's also because in the end, you can have the best possible activity you can have the best coaches everything but if people don't come back it has no value in it it's it's not a sports club if there's only one member right so so we really want to focus on that and what we do is that again we go very low key and i'm going to try and rush through this because we don't have that much time but this is just to give you some practical examples of what we actually end up talking with uh, our, our communities about it's about having those team rituals like do we start and end together um, and in the same way. Are we good at actually encouraging laughter during the practice? Also when we have with the um, high performance teams, like is there room for laughter? Is there room for mistakes? Because we as sports communities can actually teach our children to make mistakes without fearing them, which is a massive building block for them when they go out into the rest of the world and will be met with other obstacles out there. So how do we improve that through games, exercises, icebreakers? Can we bring them together? Can we teach them of, of becoming a, a more thick um, group inside of the, you know, the different practices? We tend to do these smaller groups, especially girls tend to go together, three or four girls, and they're the best friends. But can we sometimes challenge that, uh, you know, unity by 
pre-making the groups so everyone gets to know each other a little bit better. They don't have to be best friends, but they need to be a team. They need to be a group. And also encourage the interaction uh, between people by actually like making them do reflective questions during smaller breaks or warm up or stress stretching sessions uh, where we just ask simple questions to each other like what was the best thing that's happened to you this week or um, what makes you happy when you don't do sports something that teaches us something more about now I'm going to call her Anne again but I just love um, that case from the introduction and again, we believe that everyone has resources and everyone's our heroes. That is our main approach to this. So again, we encourage uh, coaches also to look at their the way they structure their um, their activities in terms of are they actually good at taking everyone ill in? It it is a massive challenge for our coaches, and we bow to that because coaches they are everyday heroes. But are they actually good at uh, making sure their skilled options? Are they good at Again, challenging people or finding different ways to to um, or making people participate. Sometimes we have those kids that are not really there for the sport, but more there for the social uh, aspect of it. Can we then ask them to take a little bit of a co-coaching role or anything that actually gives them the the, the you know the confident boost and still makes makes them smile and feel part of the team? Um, low key when we're out. Uh, and about we actually make our clubs do this um yeah it's well we can call it an action plan or an intention plan but it's just a good tool for us to use uh because sometimes it helps getting things down on paper so we ask our clubs to actually think about these micro actions and behaviors they want to introduce they need to be specific they need to be action oriented and need to be able to be executed um, without any bigger financial cost, unless they of course want to. Um, and we focus again on the before, the, the during and the after process. And basically what is standing here in Danish that you we haven't translated for you, and I apologize about that. It's saying, um, what do you want to take home and focus on? Who is going to do it? And when are you going to do it? So again, we're going to force them to actually uh, take a moment to reflect on these things, but also make them in a tangible way that they can go home and execute it the moment we leave the workshop. Okay, that was me <laughs> talking really fast and probably going loads over time. All right, so that was uh, black number two concerning the what are we actually doing with our sport communities.